maritime heritage in Hawaii begins hundreds of years ago. Guided by the stars and the waves, Polynesian voyagers came by water in large double-hull canoes across thousands of miles of Oceania. This migration was one of the most incredible achievements of the human race. Discovering and settling the remote, widely scattered islands of the Central Pacific was an amazing feat. Navigators trained themselves to be acutely aware of their environment. They used this information to guide them accurately to their destinations. Seafaring skills spread voyages across an ocean area of over 10 million square miles. The early Polynesian voyages arguably were, were the best explorers on the face of the earth. I think what's important about the seafaring traditions is, is the recognition that as our cultures evolved 2,000 years here, it's always been shaped by the relationship between the land and the oceans. The Polynesian people who settled in the Hawaiian Islands retained their seafaring expertise and cultivated a maritime-based culture throughout their history. These first settlers did not remain alone in the Pacific. Captain Cook's legendary voyage in 1778 brought him to Hawaii shores, and others soon followed. Native Hawaiian seafaring did not end with this contact, but merged and continued alongside these new traditions. Maritime activities reflected multiple cultures and seafaring traditions. With its central location in the Pacific Ocean, the Hawaiian Islands quickly became a crossroads for ships of all types. Even with all the ship traffic, many areas of the Pacific remained uncharted. The northwestern Hawaiian Islands were, and for that matter still are, particularly treacherous for mariners. The low-lying atolls, hazardous reefs and shallow banks have all contributed to the many wrecks found here. These wrecks are unique resources that hold valuable historic information. Even when scattered and broken on the reef, they are time capsules of once tragic events. They are some of the last remaining chapters of Hawaiian maritime history linking us to our past. Preservation of these non-renewable resources is part of our responsibility as caretakers of the world's oceans. In today's archaeology and, and maritime history, we go to great lengths to bring in experts in various fields to make this a multidisciplinary effort to put all these stories that we tell from various individual shipwreck sites into the broader context. And uh, I think that makes it a lot more interesting and also a lot more relevant. People can identify with it much easier when they see how this really fits rather than just a single story. Some of the earliest arrivals were the New England whalers who found their way to the Pacific in their global pursuit of liquid gold, whale oil. Many of them made Hawaii a port of call for provisions and repairs, and many native Hawaiians chose to participate in the whaling trade. At times, native Hawaiians may have comprised one-fifth of the American whaling fleet in the Pacific. Whaling activities in Hawaii changed the social and economic climate. Encountering uncharted atolls in Hawaiian waters, these whalers also became explorers, leaving their mark here by giving some of the islands their Western names. Such is the case with Pearl and Hermes Atoll, where the British whalers Pearl and Hermes were lost in 1822. The Hermes struck first, and the Pearl, going to her assistance, ran aground soon after the combined crews made it safely to one of the small islands. The artifacts left scattered underwater record the details of that fatal day.
Sailing in the wake of the whalers and other commercial vessels came the ships of a young American Navy to protect economic interests and project American presence in the Pacific. In 1870, the Navy sidewheel steamer USS Saginaw was assigned the task of opening a channel at Midway Island. On her homeward leg, during the passage from Midway to Honolulu, the captain altered course to check for shipwreck survivors on Cure Atoll, only to run aground in heavy surf on the reef. Her crew spent two months on the island while a small boat was outfitted and five volunteers made a perilous journey to the southeast for assistance. Four died during the rough landing on Koi. Only one, William Halford, survived to report on his stranded crewmates. The scattered artifacts set amidst the reef crest tell of the violence of the wrecking event and the crew's initial struggle to survive. With their central location in the Pacific, the Hawaiian Islands became a strategic control point for the U.S. military. Today, there is still no other location as critical to the American presence as Pearl Harbor. The Japanese military recognized this and dealt a painful but not fatal blow to the American fleet on December 7, 1941. Pearl Harbor became the focus of massive repair and supply activities in the Pacific and a strategic base for U.S. operations for the remainder of the war. This effort extended from the main Hawaiian Islands all the way north to Midway Atoll. The Battle of Midway in June 1942 was the only real combat in the Hawaiian Islands after the initial attack on Pearl Harbor and Oahu. All of these wartime activities left behind a sunken legacy throughout the Hawaiian Islands. The cultural relevance of Pearl Harbor to the Hawaiian people goes back way before the arrival of Cook. This had been a sacred site. It had been a site in which fish ponds were created. The culture flourished around it. So there is a history before Pearl Harbor. But there is also the significant cultural landmark for the people of the United States. The attack on Pearl Harbor ushers in World War II, and with it, tremendous changes that not only affect the people of the United States, but the people of the world. I think that the public has always had an awareness and a fascination with underwater shipwrecks and archaeology because it's part of our past. True to their maritime heritage, over 5,000 Native Hawaiians worked supporting or serving in the U.S. Navy during World War II. These World War II wrecks, including approximately 80 ships and submarines, as well as 1,500 naval aircraft, are important historical touchstones for Hawaii and the rest of the world. NOAA's National Marine Sanctuary Program and other partnering agencies are working to locate and document some of these lost wrecks. Many sites lie in very deep water, requiring special vehicles, like the University of Hawaii's Pisces Submersibles for Exploration. One of the five specialized Japanese midget submarines that led the attack on Pearl Harbor, discovered in 2002, lies in 1,200 feet of water off Oahu. None of the subs were successful in their mission, but these wrecks are an important chapter in our history and memorials to the sacrifices made at that time. Discovery and exploration of these sites can open a window on the war period and events, which changed world history. When we know all the facts surrounding our heritage resources, the stories come alive. In January of 1944, the submarine rescue vessel the USS McCall arrived on station at Midway Atoll to salvage the damaged submarine flyer. In bad weather, she grounded herself on the reef at the entrance to the harbor. The storm trapped her crew on board. She ultimately slid off the reef and sank in deeper water. The commanding officer 
and four crew members were lost. This wreck now lies inside the Midway Atoll National Wildlife Refuge. One of the responsibilities of the Fish and Wildlife Service in managing a national wildlife refuge is not only to protect and conserve the biological resources, but also to inventory and protect the cultural resources that might be within the refuge. And we know based on historic records that there was a lot of maritime activity at both the Hawaiian Islands Refuge and Midway Atoll National Life Refuge. Therefore, it's important for us to know and look for uh, maritime sites that might be present in the refuge and then work with others to ensure that um, they're protected into the future. Whether the wrecks are World War II sites or 19th century whalers, they all have something in common, the element of discovery. What's exciting is that uh, it's kind of a hunt for a historic site. If you find an anchor chain that stretches off into the distance in the sand and follow it, you don't know what's at the other end. It could be a shipwreck, it could be just a lost anchor. If you find other things in the sand, you begin to piece things together like a puzzle and you solve a mystery. You solve a mystery of who's at the site, what happened, and that mystery is often tragic. It's a tragic event. You're looking at a place, you're looking at an accident, you're possibly looking at a loss of life uh, that has a, has a story behind it and captures part of our maritime history. And you're right there at the same spot. You're in the same waves, you're in the same surf that caused that vessel to wreck. The legends are buried in the sands of time on the ocean floor. But archaeologists, historians, divers, and others are able to find the pieces that allow the stories to be put back together, making history come alive. I think what we have is the ability to look back at extraordinary accomplishments of people that ventured out on the ocean in their particular time within history. That helps define who we are today, and it helps shape uh, our uh, understanding of the importance to, to continue to explore. NOAA's National Marine Sanctuary Program, through the Maritime Heritage Effort, works to preserve and protect our national maritime heritage and to share these touchstones with the public. These resources deserve our respect and our efforts to learn their stories and remember the history they represent. <laughs>